Welcome ladies and gentlemen to a video where we are trying to fill in the plot holes of many very very large plot holes in famous movies and to do this I need a judge jury and executioner as it is to help me along this way so I am here here is my very good friend and compatriot Milan Jeftik also known as the Russian comic book geek Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, genders, sexualities, preferences, colors, religious beliefs, and like thereof. Yes, I am the subsequent man that this fine individual introduced to you just now. I am a Russian person, so you can very well assume that I am drunk, and I am very impartial. <laughs> you always have the best intros, dude. <laughs> I know, that's all I got. I got a good intro and everything else uh, past the intro is just complete and utter benign filth. Yeah, but you can roll your R's. If I could roll my R's like that, that's all I would ever do in any video. Oh, definitely. That's all I got. That's my, that's my one trick. I can roll my R's and sound vaguely like I know what the heck I'm talking about. But anyway, bring the lambs to the slaughter. All right, so here, Milan, I have for you five famous plot holes and I've researched various fan theories and also mixed in with some theories of my own that mm. supposedly fill those plot holes. Mm. And you, Milan, are the judge, jury and executioner. It's your job to determine whether these theories are plausible or not plausible. Yes, yes, I'm sitting here with my gavel, my black dress and curly white wig with a hammer in one hand. It's <laughs> a, it, it sounds very impressive, but, but really it's not. That's how I usually look like, but this is Liverpool. Anyway, continue. <laughs> okay. All right. Movie number one, The Dark Knight Rises. We all know The Dark Knight Rises. Yes, definitely. Funny thing, and th funny thing is, uh, a couple of days ago, me and my father watched both the, da uh, the Dark Knight and Batman Begins together as one thing in Russian. Oh. Yeah, halfway through The Dark Knight, my dad just turns to me and says, Milan, me and your older brother used to work for the Russian Mafia. And then he wow. went back to watching Batman punch a man in the face. I'm like, thanks, Dad! Oh, wow. Yep. Do you, do you reckon he said it just to spin you out, or is that actually true? I think it's true, yes. That would make sense. My dad was a transporter for the Russian Mafia. Oh, wow. Man. Yes. You know what? I can actually identify, because I was like moving into state at one point in my life. I've moved into state many periods, but at one particular point, I went and saw my like uncle before I left, and he's like, oh, by the way, I traced all our family back, and mm -hmm. it turns out that um, our family came across as like the guards of the British convicts and was in Tasmania, because, you know, in Tasmania, the aboriginals there were completely decimated and mm -hmm. wiped out, and it turns out that my ancestor was like the main guy who was in charge of doing that. <laughs> And there's actually stuff in print about Captain McKenzie, who's like wiped out the indigenous population of <laughs> Tasmania. Yep. And I was yep. like, uh, yep, thanks, yep. uncle. I would really rather if you hadn't told me that, but hey. Yeah, that's a great way. This is a fantastic way to start a video. Hey, yeah. my father is a Russian mobster and your great, great uncle is related to a, 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 a genocidal, genocidal maniac. maniac. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm the direct descendant of the white genocidal lunatic, but... Anyway, most people are. <laughs> if you're, yeah, most white Anglo-Saxon people are. So whatever. Please go on. So anyway, anyway, um, Dark Knight Rises. You know, there's the bit in that where after Batman, he crawls his way out of the hole. Then he magically reappears in Gotham again, and everyone's like, "How on earth did he get back to Gotham when he's got no money?" They establish that. He's got no technology because it's all in Gotham mm -hmm. and he's just recovered from a broken back. How on earth did he get back to Gotham? Here's the fan theory, Milan. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. You remember how Batman's like, there's no autopilot on the bat. I've got to get it out over the bay, but there's no yeah. autopilot. I should just establish that again. But we all know that there actually was autopilot because mm -hmm. he faked his death. 
So the fan theory is, once he got out of the hole, all he needed to do was find his way to a single telephone so he could call the bat directly and it would fly on the autopilot to wherever he was and pick him up and could fly him back into Gotham. Do you think that's a plausible explanation as to how he got back to Gotham? Um... See, I never really saw that whole part of the story as a plot hole per se. Because, really? I mean, like in Batman Begins, he essentially spent seven years of his life bumming around the world uh, without a penny in his pocket. He sp essentially spent seven years learning the way of the transient and the criminal. I mean, it, it shouldn't be that hard for him to get back to wherever he wants to go. It's not like the, w the ground around him is covered with snakes. I mean, all he has to do is have a few hitchhikes there, some laundered money. Well, he doesn't even need money. You can get anywhere you want to if you use your brain. True, true. But I, I would say, though, that during In Batman's Begins, when we saw him traveling all around the world, that was over a period of seven years. We know that there was three months. It was a three-month limit. Do you reckon he would be able, like, time-wise, do you reckon he would be able to hitchhike his way back to Gotham from wherever he was? Oh, definitely. Or do you reckon... The autopilot bat is a good enough explanation. <laughs> I don't think it's a good enough explanation. I think it's overly complex, to be honest. Or uh, not even overly complex, it's just stupid. I mean, <laughs> if the bat is that easy, you can literally call it on any phone and say, Hey, bat, pick me up. Come on, dude. Can't he do that with the tumbler as well? He like he will like call it, or maybe I'm thinking Tim Burton's Batman, but the car will drive itself to him. So it's not that crazy, is it? Well, not at all, but it's just like, I just never saw that as a necessary thing. I mean, he people treat it like it's this gigantic plot hole in the movie, and it's really not. I mean, it's Batman. Sure, it's Batman with help, but it's still Batman. Oh. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I guess, you know, hitchhike his way to an airport, sneak onto a plane. I mean, he's Batman. He's Batman. Yeah. It's, not, it's not even because he's Batman. I mean, my dad once said, told me, like, I went from Iraq to Russia by foot in about three weeks. I'm like, really? Wow. Yes. And like, if my dad can do it, then Batman sure can. But anyway, this lamb's <laughs> head has been slaughtered. <laughs> Bring me another one. All right, that one's busted. Busted, open. Busted, yeah. With a hammer. All right, next one. Good old Star Wars. Yes. Okay, the plot hole in this one yeah. is, do you remember in Empire Strikes Back, just after Han Solo got frozen in the carbonite, and you remember there's a moment where Leia sort of turns and she looks at Darth Vader, and he looks back at him, and there's a moment where they sort of lock eyes, and then after that, Lando goes to take her away, and Vader's like, no, you know what? Change of plans. I'm taking her with me. Well, it's sort of implied in that whole scene that there was like some kind of connection with the Force made between Princess Leia and Vader there, and that he recognized it, and that's why on the spot he changed his mind. He's like, no, I'm altering the deal. A lot of people say in A New Hope, there's like five or six scenes where Darth Vader and Leia are together and at no point does he ever twig and say, you know, I think this chick might actually be my daughter. Well, the thing is, Leia isn't really a force user now, is she? Exactly. I mean, that's yeah. exactly the point. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, Luke is like, he's, he's Jedi trained. He has some skill. He has some, you know, natural uh, uh, skill with the Force. And thus, Vader has a certain connection with him. And Leia, that's that's yeah. the theory, is they say, in that moment where Luke is trying to blow up the Death Star, that's really the first time that Luke really embraces the Force. And that's when Vader kind of says, oh, the Force is strong with this one. So they're mm. saying maybe someone needs to start using the Force before anyone can sense their presence through the Force. Yeah, exactly. Because because after, after that movie in Return of the in Empire Strikes Back, you remember Vader's like going crazy looking for him because mm -hmm. he sensed him and he can sense Obi-Wan on the Death Star because he's got a lot of history with him. Mm -hmm. But I think this theory is good because it adds to it like at that moment in Empire Strikes Back where Leia looks at him, if that was the first time she ever used the Force, that would explain why that was the first time that he ever sensed anything in her. Mm -hmm. And it would explain why all through the New Hope, he never twigged that it was his daughter because she'd never used the Force before. Exactly. So you think you think that's a good theory? That is a, that is actually a rather well thought out explanation. Yeah. yeah oh my totally. God, this lamb gets to live. <laughs> go on, little lamb. Go frolic in the green hills of of letting being legitimate. Go yes. away. Yes, yes. Okay, Star bang, Wars bang. fan theory works. Excellent. Brr, go on, let's go. Bring me a new one. Brr. 
Okay, um, Lord of the Rings. Oh yes. Uh, we're talking the uh, the first Lord of the Rings, the classic. I actually stole this from um, uh, the Mister Sunday Movies <laughs> podcast of the Weekly Planet, so I've stolen it from them. But it's good enough. We're going to use it. Lovely podcast, by the way. Oh, fantastic! I love that mm, podcast. Definitely, it's basically two Australian boys talking geeky to you in your ears. It's lovely. <laughs> It's lovely. Oh dear! Oh, oh that's fantastic! You know? It's fantastic. The the Lord of the Rings theory. You know, a lot of people say with Lord of the Rings, why didn't if they can fly the eagles, why didn't they just fly over the volcano and just drop the ring in? See th- that whole thing. I just get so annoyed. It's like, it's the eagles. Like in the books, not even in the books. Yeah. Like the eagles help out Gandalf because, well, they owe him. And it's not like the eagles are going to straight out go out and do what he wants. It's not like they're magical beasts that are under his control. There's a king of the eagles, Mm -hmm. and he's an actual, you know, like he's intelligence. They talk. They have political Mm -hmm. dramas up in the sky with feathers. Sure, I guess that's like, why can he just, you know, talk the king of the eagles into helping the war effort? When he found that Frodo had the ring... What was it going to do? Just go off to the mountains somewhere where the king of the eagles was and just ask him to throw into the throw it into the thing? But remember, Sauron had dragons. So if the eagles were to mm. fly, the dragons would just attack and eat them. Here's the thing, though, is because you remember in the two towers when we see Gandalf, he jumps off the, the tower and the eagle did get in there to save him. Mm. This theory actually links in with that. The theory is, in the first Lord of the Rings movie, when they're, they're passing through the mountain, that's because off-screen, Gandalf must have contacted the eagles somehow, and the, the reason he wanted to cross the mountain is not just because Mount Doom was on the other side of it, was because the eagles were going to meet them on the other side of it, and they, that was his plan. They were going to fly the eagles over to Mount Doom and just drop the ring in. So when Gandalf is hanging off the edge of the ledge, and he says to them, fly, you fools, he's actually referring to the eagles themselves, that he's assuming that they will get out, get on the eagles, and be able to drop the ring in. Mm. But the theory says apparently, like, I don't know, they get out the other side and the eagles are like, oh, there's no Gandalf, well, let's just leave. Mm. But now some people will say, but they couldn't do that anyway because of the, you know, dragon circling Mount Doom. But in Two Towers, it showed that one of them could get in to save Gandalf. So the theory is maybe they didn't have the circling fell beast then, so they maybe had just one shot one shot to take the eagles in there and dump it but they didn't get to use that because that one chance was burned up by Gandalf being rescued in the two towers well in the two towers he's not really in Mordor he's just where Sauron is oh that's right well that's busted the theory yeah, yeah. The <laughs> lamb. Busted the theory then. The, the 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 lamb is now a, a gruesome mess on the floor. It has been gavel hammer upon the altar of nitpicking. Exactly. Be, be gone, you foul thing. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Because that that wasn't Mount Doom that it picked no. him up at. It was at Sauron's yeah Sauron's no. base, wasn't it? Because you see it in that deleted scene where Saruman gets stabbed in the back by Wormtongue. Well, you're yeah. a good judge. Too. I am a great judge. I, I'm now playing with my white long hair with my hammer. <laughs> uh, I'm so delightful. I kind of picture you as like the Johnny Depp judge from that Pirates of the Caribbean movie. <laughs> Bring me another lamb. All right. <laughs> we, got, we got two left. This one's Pacific Rim. Ooh. You know in Pacific Rim... Charlie Hunnam with Gypsy Danger and he like whips out that awesome samurai sword and he just starts like slashing the kaijus to pieces and Mm. everyone's like how come you didn't use that earlier it's so effective in killing all the kaijus and you just oh yeah we got this sword and then whip it out out of nowhere well the theory is when Charlie Hunnam first shows up to get in Gypsy Danger they mention oh we've made a few additions so presumably one of those additions was the samurai sword Mm. which is maybe why in the heat of battle he didn't think to use it straight on because it didn't come to his mind immediately that that's something that they have because it was a new addition definitely also the only kaiju they actually use that sword on is like the weakest of the three and you Mm. know how they have the class three class four class five all that sort of stuff Mm mm-hmm It's not a class 5 that they use the sword on. So they're saying maybe the sword was only built to deal with the lower class kaijus and not the class 5. 
Yeah, of course, because the larger kaiju, they all, they essentially look like moving mountains. They yeah. look really armored. And that, as awesome as that sword might be, I mean, the flying thing essentially was made from flesh. You could tell it had muscle and bone, while the other kaiju just looked like that sword would just not even break through the armor. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. The, sh should I crush the head of this poor little lamb? Yes, theory? go ahead and okay. crush that head. Okay, there you go, it's dead. So, Dark Knight Rises have been crushed. Lord mm -hmm. of the Rings has been crushed. Mm -hmm. Pacific Rim has been crushed. Star Wars has survived. Mm -hmm. So, there's only one left. Let's see if the Star Wars might be the lone survivor, depending on this last one. Oh, well, I, I don't know about this last one. This one could go either way, dude. Well, personally, I think the Dark Knight Rises lamb just got a little... Like, it's got hit in the head, but it still walked away. It might have a little bit of brain damage, but it survived. Well, it's, it's kind of like, because <laughs> like you said, that was kind of never really a plot hole because we've already established that he's a guy that can get around the world, Batman. So, yeah. so the sacrificial lamb was never a sacrificial lamb. It was just a lamb. Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> no lambs are hurt in this video. And if, and if you truly believe that I actually t bashed in the skulls of adorable lambs with a hammer, like you would hear the bones crunch. And you'd hear the adorable sounds that they were making, you know, like, it, it's, it's not like I went in and edited, edited the sound clip and took out all the uh, incriminating evidence. Mm. I'll, I'll tell you something, Milan. Yeah. <laughs> Even though I grew up in the suburbs and not in the countryside, I actually did have a pet lamb. Because <laughs> we lived in a house that was like a regular house, but the previous owners had owned a, a horse in the backyard, so it was just this giant empty backyard. So we just, we had friends that owned a farm. So we got a single lamb mm -hmm. just so that it could eat all the grass and we wouldn't have to mow the lawn. <laughs> and that, that lamb hated me with a passion every time i would walk outside in the backyard he would just come charging out of nowhere and just slam me down and i was like 10 or 11 at the time so to me that lamb was like the size of a horse mm -hmm. and it would just completely trample me i hated that lamb but having said that we're not endorsing lamb slaughter for not sacrificial all. purposes here not at all not at all <laughs> i mean like you are merely just you know you're using my lamb destroying skills for therapy essentially <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah so I'm, I'm living out my uh, subconscious hatred for lambs through you <laughs> i love being the weapon of your revenge <laughs> against the vile lamb it's amazing okay um the last the last one all right <clears throat> looper have you seen mm. looper unfortunately so yes <laughs> Oh man, you're going to love this part because oh. this theory is every bit as complicated and illogical as the movie itself. Mm. The, the particular plot hole, I mean, there's so many plot holes in that movie. Any movie mm. with time travel is going to have plot holes, but especially that one. But this particular plot hole is the question about nobody can get away with murder in the future because forensics or whatever are, are so good that you can't get away with it. So mm. they send them back in time. Joseph Gordon-Levitt and other people that are loopers kill them. That's, that's the backbone of the entire story. The whole reason they need loopers is because you can't kill people in the future. Mm -hmm. But then when they go to pick up Bruce Willis in the future, who is the future version of Joseph Gordon-Levitt, it, one of the dudes in the funny hats that's there to pick them up just recklessly shoots his wife and just kills her right there on the spot. So that's the plot hole. That's ridiculous, exactly. I mean, and they all come dressed as, I don't know, some 1950s gangsters in the future. It's like, hey, we, we wear silly hats and trench coats and we're in some Asiatic country for some reason. I'm like, okay, um... <laughs> They're, they're, in, they're in China because they were trying to market it in China because mm -hmm. that's where all the money is. But <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, everyone. China is going to be the next America. Well, I actually agree with you on that. I think it will be. Yeah, definitely. But anyway, that conversation for a different podcast. <laughs> definitely. Po anyway. Politics is, for, is, is boring. Let's talk about Looper. So here's, here's the theory to explain that. It's every bit as vast and complicated as the movie itself. Do you remember, I can't remember the actor's name, but he's the actor who played the dominant a character alongside Jim Carrey and he was in Looper you remember his character yeah yeah he was the the angry man from the future yeah he was the future guy who was in Joseph Gordon-Levitt's boss and he sort of ran all the loopers he is the the vast overreaching theory that explains why they shot his wife in the same kind of way that 
loopers are like a specific kind of assassin that they have. Those guys who showed up to grab Bruce Willis were a specific team that they have just to close the loops of the loopers. And the theory is that the Dumb and Dumber guy was from that same team. Here's the idea. The idea is when they want to close a loop, some people said, well, if they're from the future, they would be able to show up anywhere where someone is because they would know because in hindsight, you can look back and track where people are, you know? Mm -hmm. So if one person was like, hey, yesterday I saw Bruce Willis here, they can just jump back to wherever he is and find him. So that's not a problem. That team that picked up Bruce Willis was a team that travels back through time, closing the loops of all the different loopers on the way through. And they eventually end up in Joseph Gordon-Levitt's time period to become the Dumb and Dumber guy. Because, you know, he was from the future, but he went back mm. in time to run everything so they're saying that instead of sending them back straight they they send them back go back a month close this guy's loop go back another year to where we know this guy's going to be close his loop go back another year close that loop close that loop and they work their way back until they end up in the past so because they're working back they can just commit whatever crimes they want and it doesn't matter because they're already going to end up in the time where they can't find them mm. that's the very elaborate fan theory to explain why that team could bust in maybe they all wore those fancy hats because they were of that elite team Mm. They can just recklessly shoot the wife because who cares? They're going to end up in the past anyway. Well, this is my thought. Okay. You see, I think this whole looper business uh, is really kind of with the higher ups. It's not exactly like the higher. It's really the loopers are there for the higher echelons of the mafia or the government or whatever. It's just uh, something, not, not exactly the government, but high class, high crime, you know. Those yeah. guys, are, of course you have crime in the future. It's not like it's completely been wiped out. You have the thug, the guy who just randomly starts shooting in the crowd. I think those guys didn't really understand what they were doing there. Just like, hey, common thug, here's a silly hat and go kill this guy. Why? Here's some money. Okay, I won't ask questions. I think that's what it really was. It just had some random schmo, uh, just like... <laughs> You know, some underlevel guy doing the dirty stuff, not knowing why they were doing it. Oh my god, that makes so much more sense. <laughs> yeah. That totally makes more sense. Yeah, they just hire some random guy who doesn't even understand what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And that way, if he gets locked up for murder, who cares? Cause he's yeah, just so ra yeah that's, that's totally a much better explanation. <laughs> Yeah, because you, you you can't completely get rid of crime, even though you know um, you know DNA testing and all that stuff might get even better, and it, it might be cut down and like capture will be a lot quicker. But you still get the basic thug. You still get the guy who gets who gets in and out of prison. Uh, I guess this whole kind of overcomplicating of the plot is really isn't really necessary. It's just some thugs <laughs> in silly hats. See, I actually thought that was a pretty good theory. I was like, yeah, because they do send guys back like the Dumb and Dumber guy. So wouldn't they close all the loops as they go back and then you can still get away with murder because you're in the past? And you're like, no, they just pick some idiot who doesn't understand it. And it's like, yeah, that, that totally makes sense. Yeah, but like that whole really <laughs> elaborate theory, just it, it, it's really awesome. It's like it's some really, really interesting fan theory, fan fiction material. It's like, huh, that's actually rather clever in a way. That's that's kind of the, the summation of the whole movie, really. <laughs> it's mm. like it can be clever if you're willing to overlook a lot of stuff. <laughs> I know a lot of people weren't willing to overlook a lot of stuff, but I actually thought Looper was okay. Yeah, definitely. At least he was trying to tell a story and actually have some genuine science fiction elements. I mean, even in the... Like, there is no holy lamb of science fiction. You're going to have to look over some things. Like, people complain about plot holes and this and that. I mean, no movie is perfect. And people who complain... Like, not even goddamn mm. Citizen Kane. That's not perfect because as he's... like. In one scene, as he's driving through his privately owned jungle or whatever, you see a gosh darn pterodactyl because they use some. That you do, you do. You you see fuck, freaking dinosaurs because, because they used old stock footage from King Kong. Really? So yeah, oh, apparently man, I didn't know that. Yeah, apparently yeah, I... Citizen Kane <laughs> is so wealthy he can reverse engineer. He can he, just create pterodactyls. Exactly. He, he just <laughs> yes, just Jurassic Park there. Like, just... oh my god. Yeah. So <laughs> even Citizen Kane is not the perfect echelon of cinematic wonderfulness as people claim that it is, you know.
I just, I just crushed the skull <laughs> of Citizen Kane, Lamb. There you go. We just busted Citizen Kane as well. Yeah, <laughs> are we now? It's like all of a sudden it's we. I did all the work. <laughs> oh my god. You did, my I'm Sorry, you're the judge. You're the that's judge. right. That's sort of, Who's the one who wears the wig and the black dress? And by black dress, I really do mean black dress. I have high heels. It's a fine, uh, fitting little thing. It's wonder. It, it makes. It doesn't make me. Uh, I don't. No, you can't see me, but I think it makes my butt look a little bit big. But you know, it's it's delightful. But I got a hammer. I look like a cross gender Harley Quinn, to be honest, <laughs> with white hair. So if if you want to check out the and Jeff Dick, <laughs> if you want to check out the and Jeff Dick, yeah, click on the link here for his Russian comic book geek channel. Yes, where he does some. Absolutely amazing videos that are, it's, it's hard to even describe your audio comic book because there's, there's nothing else out there that's quite like them. So it's hard to even describe what they are. Well, essentially, it's, it's kind of like, yeah. a, it's kind of like a cross between a, a comic book and an audio book and a, a radio drama, I suppose. I guess, essentially, it's, what I do is uh, I essentially go out and take certain issues, mostly now I'm doing Moon Knight, Warren Ellis's Moon Knight, and I'm kind of making them into motion comics, while all, just kind of to punctuate my point in my review, I'm kind of taking my review and the motion comic bits, splicing them together to make something rather interesting. Um, that's on my Russian Come Up A Geek channel. It's rather a new channel with 40 subscribers or so with 20 views per video maybe you find people can change that that's my good channel that's the stuff i'm proud of on my other channel the milan jeftic 1992 channel is essentially uh, what did mr sunday movies call it the he soul called it the, the, the soul crushing <laughs> Soul crushing channel. It's essentially whatever. Like it's me completely and utterly uncensored. It's mm. it's it's mm. the sheer Lovecraftian horror of my inner soul. My good friend Ian once said that I am one good crime away from being classified as a Batman villain. That's actually true. <laughs> I yeah, could see it, that. Yeah, you know the Russian just throw Molotov cocktails at the police. Ride around in an ice cream truck with, you know, theme dressed henchmen or something. Anyway, play us out. So thank you so much, Milan, for uh, being a part of this, aka the Russian comic book geek. All, all the links are below to check out Milan Jeftik. <laughs> Take care and I'll see you next time. Telephone so he could call the bat directly and it would fly on the autopilot to wherever he was and pick him up and could fly him back into Gotham. Do you think that's a plausible explanation as to how he got back to Gotham? Um, see, I never really saw that whole part of the story as a plot hole per se because. Really? I mean, like, in Batman Begins, he essentially spends seven years of his life bumming around the world uh, without a penny in his pocket. He sp essentially spent seven years learning the way of the transient and the criminal. I mean, it, it shouldn't be that hard for him to get back to wherever he wants to go. It's not like the, w the ground around him is covered with snakes. I mean, all he has to do is have a few hitchhikes there, some laundered money. Well, he doesn't even need money. You can get anywhere you want to if you use your brain. True, true, but... I would say, though, that during In Batman's Begins, when we saw him traveling all around the world, that was over a period of seven years. We know that there was three months. It was a three-month limit. Do you reckon he would be able, like, time-wise, do you reckon he would be able to hitchhike his way back to Gotham from wherever he was? Oh, definitely. Or do you reckon... The autopilot bat is a good enough explanation. I don't think it's a good enough explanation. I think it's overly complex, to be honest. Or uh, not even overly complex, it's just stupid. I mean, <laughs> if the bat is that easy, you can literally call it on any phone and say, Hey, bat, pick me up. Come on, dude. Can't he do that with the tumbler as well? He like he will like call it, or maybe I'm thinking Tim Burton's Batman, but the car will drive itself to him. So it's not that crazy, is it? Well, not at all, but it's just like, I, I just never saw that as a necessary thing. I mean, he people treat it like it's this gigantic plot hole uh, in the movie, and it's really not. I mean, it's Batman. Sure, it's Batman with help, but it's still Batman. Oh. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I guess 
you know, hitchhike his way to an airport, sneak onto a plane. I mean, he's Batman. He's Batman. Yeah. It's, not, it's not even because he's Batman. I mean, my dad once said, told me, like, I went from Iraq to Russia by foot in about three weeks. I'm like, really? Wow. Yes. And like, if my dad can do it, then Batman sure can. But anyway, this lamb's <laughs> head has been slaughtered. Bring me another one. All right, that one's busted. Busted, busted. open. Yeah. With a hammer. All right, next one. Good old Star Wars. Yes. Okay, the plot hole in this one yeah. is, do you remember in Empire Strikes Back, just after Han Solo got frozen in the carbonite, and you remember there's a moment where Leia sort of turns and she looks at Darth Vader, mm. and he looks back at him, and there's a moment where they sort of lock eyes, and then after that, Lando goes to take her away, and Vader's like, no, you know what? Change of plans. I'm taking her with me. Well, it's sort of implied in that whole scene that there was like some kind of connection with the Force made between Princess Leia and Vader there and that he recognized it and that's why on the spot he changed his mind he's like no I'm altering the deal a lot of people say in A New Hope there's like five or six scenes where Darth Vader and Leia are together and at no point does he ever twig and say you know I think this chick might actually be my daughter well the thing is Leia isn't really a force user now is she exactly I mean, that's yeah. exactly the point yeah, yeah, I mean, like, Luke is like, he's, he's Jedi trained. He has some skill. He has some, you know, natural... Uh... Uh, the judge, jury, and executioner. It's your job to determine whether these theories are plausible or not plausible. Yes, yes. I'm sitting here with my gavel, my black dress, and curly white wig with a hammer in one hand. It's <laughs> a, it, it sounds very impressive, but, but really it's not. That's how I usually look like, but this is Liverpool. Anyway, continue. <laughs> Okay. All right. Movie number one, The Dark Knight Rises. We all know The Dark Knight Rises. Yes, definitely. Funny thing, and th funny thing is, uh, a couple of days ago, me and my father watched both the, da uh, the Dark Knight and Batman Begins together as one thing in Russian. Oh. Yeah, halfway through The Dark Knight, my dad just turns to me and says, Milan, me and your older brother used to work for the Russian Mafia. And then he wow. went back to watching Batman punch a man in the face. I'm like, thanks, Dad! <laughs> Yep. Do you, do you reckon he said it just to spin you out, or is that actually true? I think it's true, yes. That would make sense. My dad was a transporter for the Russian Mafia. Oh, wow. Man. Yes. You know what? I can actually identify because I was like moving into state at one point in my life. I've moved into state many periods, but at one particular point, I went and saw my like uncle before I left, and he's like, "Oh, by the way, I traced all our family back," and mm -hmm. it turns out. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a video where we are trying to fill in the plot holes of many very, very large plot holes in famous movies. And to do this, I need a judge, jury, and executioner, as it is, to help me along this way. So... I am here. Here is my very good friend and compatriot, Milan Jeftik, also known as the Russian comic book geek. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, genders, sexualities, preferences, colors, religious beliefs, and like thereof. Yes, I am the subsequent man that this fine individual introduced to you just now. I am a Russian person, so you can very well assume that I am drunk, and I am very impartial. <laughs> you always have the best intros, dude. <laughs> I know, that's all I got. I got a good intro and everything else uh, past the intro is just complete and utter benign filth. Yeah, but you can roll your R's. If I could roll my R's like that, that's all I would ever do in any video. Oh, definitely. That's all I got. That's my, that's my one trick. I can roll my R's and sound vaguely like I know what the heck I'm talking about. But anyway, bring the lambs to the slaughter. All right, so here, Milan, I have for you 
five famous plot holes and I've researched various fan theories and also mixed in with some theories of my own that mm. supposedly fill those plot holes. Mm. And you, Milan, that um, our family came across as like the guards of the British convicts and was in Tasmania. Because, you know, in Tasmania, the Aboriginals there were completely decimated and mm -hmm. wiped out. And it turns out that my ancestor was like the main guy who was in charge of doing that. <laughs> And there's actually stuff in print about Captain Mackenzie, who's like wiped out the indigenous population of <laughs> Tasmania. Yep. And I was yep. like, uh, yep. thanks, yep. uncle. I would really rather if you hadn't told me that, but hey. Yeah, that's a great way. This is a fantastic way to start a video. Hey, yeah. my father <laughs> is a Russian mobster and your great, great uncle is related to a, 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 genocidal, a genocidal maniac. maniac. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm the direct descendant of the white genocidal lunatic, but... Anyway, most people are. <laughs> if you're, yeah, most uh, white Anglo-Saxon people are. So whatever. Please go on. So anyway, anyway, um, Dark Knight Rises. You know, there's the bit in that where after Batman, he crawls his way out of the hole. Then he magically reappears in Gotham again, and everyone's like, "How on earth did he get back to Gotham when he's got no money?" They establish that. He's got no technology because it's all in Gotham mm. and he's just recovered from a broken back. How on earth did he get back to Gotham? Here's the fan theory, Milan. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. You remember how Batman's like, there's no autopilot on the bat. I've got to get it out over the bay, but there's no yeah. autopilot. I should just establish that again. But we all know that there actually was autopilot because mm -hmm. he faked his death. So the fan theory is, once he got out of the hole, all he needed to do was find his way to a single 